We're getting our personal defense weapon on in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. All right, so let's talk externals. I'm gonna kind of run over this. So first off, nice, beautiful CNC aluminum rail, good satin black finish on it rail across the top, a lot of cutouts here on the side so you can actually have a little lightweight so it's not so heavy in the front, and tons of attachment screw points here for the three included rail segments. There's seven section long segments. You can put them wherever you want. For me, this thing is super comfortable without it. I love the feel of it. It just fits your hand just right. It's got a couple little angles to it, but not much. Everything's rounded. I think they've done a fantastic job with this, and all the holes are rounded off as well, so nothing bites into your hand that's sharp. Again, like you know what I normally would expect from g and and of course there's subtle markings, just real nice and subtle here, nothing huge and plastered. Again, for me, I appreciate subtlety when it comes to branding. But if you guys wanna do run the rail segments, you have three of them, you got all the spots, you can put it all the way back here in the back, all the way to the front, anywhere on the sides, you can put them up here at 45 degree angles or 45s down here on the sides, all the way around, so you have options, so you can put a light, a laser, a foregrip, whatever you want on there, and just put those segments on that you want. Again, they're included in the box, they're not pre-installed, so you don't have to worry about you know moving them when you get it. Underneath this rail, you do have a barrel. Outer barrel stops right here. That's where the threading is, 14 millimeter counterclockwise. And the suppressor, integral suppressor here, goes from this point all the way up. Now the suppressor itself is plastic. It's orange and it's been painted black all the way to this point for the US version. Now for international versions, I'm not sure if you're getting a metal suppressor or you're gonna get a plastic one as well and it's just gonna be black plastic all the way through, but the painting they've done on it is really good. It's nice and satiny finish. If you wanna finish this thing off, if you live in the US and you're, you're of age and you can you know do the orange tip removal and all that good stuff, I would definitely recommend taking out the inner barrel and doing the painting since things hollow and then putting it back in. Or if you guys wanna do some work, you know, actually taking the suppressor off, which I'm sure it's on there pretty darn good, like thread locked and all that, so it'll take you a little work, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard to paint this thing if you wanted to. Also nice rounded, kind of like this like black hole-ish or concave kind of look to it, not just flat. I think they did a great touch on that to make that rounding off. And moving across the top, metal flip-up sights, front and rear, fully adjustable, up, down, left, right in the back, and verticality here in the front. And they also are very low profile, so when you're not using them, you can just pop them out of the way and they barely take up any vertical space on that rail. Moving down, upper and lower receiver, full metal and full ambi controls. That's right, for you guys lefties and righties, you are set. Back here with the charging handle, it works on both sides. So you can just grab the side, open the door, exposes the barrel tie pop-up or the rotary style hop-up inside, which I love. I, I always say that every time. I do like that style. I'm glad so many companies are moving to that style hop-up. Uh, like I said, left and right on this one, it's nice. Kind of gives it a cool custom look. Also, all your fire controls down here are lefty and righty friendly. That's right. I love the fact that g is making more guns, especially in their high-end series lefty friendly as well. Uh, the left fire selector is a little longer than the right, so for your righties, it won't bite into you. If you're a lefty, no problem. Click Allen key screw, boom, boom, you can move them over the left to the right, and now you got the short one on the left hand side, so you actually won't have it digging into that hand. So again, they thought of that. Also, mag release is fully ambi, and I like the fact that it's fully ambi because for this side, for normal AR controls, you have to take your finger off the trigger to do your mag change. What I like over here, because the button's right here on this side, you just press it with your thumb. It's a one-handed mag change. You can leave your finger on the trigger, reach up and pull the mag out and do the mag change. I love the fact that it's there. They also have reinforcements built around it, a lot of detailing in here, so you can't accidentally bump those controls. Even the mag release on this side, everything has like metal built up around it, so you won't accidentally bump it. You really have to intentionally get your hand in there to hit the button. Running externals, you do have that magazine like we talked about a second ago. It's 300 round, high caps included in the box. It's the plastic body with the rubber outer coating with like the finger grooves. Makes it real easy for mag changes. Keep in mind, like some of these are a little tough to get in the double mag pouches because of the extra rubber on them, but Again, it's a small price to pay for actually having a really nice mag with that good rubber coating. I would do the trade-off any day of the week just because it's easy to get a hold of, easy to grab, a lot easier than almost any other mag on the market today. Also moving across the bottom, you have an oversized uh, trigger guard here, extra beefy and curved outwards. If you have gloves or any like really, really, really big hands, it's nice and easy to get in there. And here on the grip, it's nice finger grooved. Again, it's ambi, so there's not like a thumb rest just for one, like just for righties. So it works for both. And of course the bottom, you have your motor adjustment plate down here, nice big heat sinks to keep everything nice and cool. Rounding out the back, you do have an attachment point here for a ring for a sling. I would probably put one of those in there. It is in the polymer, but man, this polymer looks really good. It's nice and thick there. I mean, it's like, 
at least half a centimeter, not more thickness there. So I'd put a ring in there and go ahead and run it if you wanted to, to hang a uh, single attachment point sling on there. Also spring loaded PDW stock. Now this is what makes a PDW a PDW. I think that, and for me, that integrated suppressor, the suppressor lives inside the rail. Press the both buttons simultaneously, pops that up lets it spring out and you can pull it the rest of the way. It is nice and curved here in the back. It's also rounded and most PDWs, they just put this little flat plate and it's not comfortable. This one is very comfortable because they rounded it, they curved the edges and they put some like aggressive little texture on the back. They've done a very good job to make this thing comfortable to use, which is one of my biggest complaints about a PDW. But the biggest complaint is the battery compartment. So the battery compartment itself is back here and this is where I'm usually giving you bad news. So in this one, it's a single button push. It lets you pull off this plate. The plate actually, unless you really wiggle it out, will stay here in the groove, which I like. So you can actually just pull it out of the way. You won't lose this end cap, which is super important to hang on to because that's where the spring loadedness is for the stock. If that's a word, spring loadedness. Inside you have a Tamiya connector and a fuse inside, a blade type fuse, like a car style one, the actual blades. So you can swap it there if you need to. Easy access and here's the good news, the stock is extra long. It's a little longer. Most PDW stocks stop, stop right here. That's where a PDW stock, they give you a good inch and a half more space. What that inch and a half gets you is the ability to put an 11.1 or a 7.4 LiPo in here, no problem, like a buffer tube style, like a stick kind. There are plenty on the market that will fit down here. Obviously test it out, make sure it fits before you go and, and just think you have one at the house, but most of them are going to fit. Your smaller ones on the market are gonna go right in here, which I love. Now bad news, you can't fit a 9.6 nunchuck, but most people have moved over to LiPos these days, and I would say for this, you definitely want to, especially considering the power and the performance on this high-end gun. We're gonna talk about all that in internals right now. All right, so under the hood is what you'd expect from the high-end GNG, especially in 2016 and on. Eight millimeter bearing bushings, all the reinforced internals, their piston, their, their gear set, everything in there is their top of the line components. Also in the front, once you move on up here, 603 millimeter type bore inside of here. It is, runs all the way to about there. It's a little shy of it, which I do like it. Free floats, but you're not gonna have any issues. The hole here is plenty big. I had no problems in my test with any BBs bouncing around the, uh, the inside of the suppressor. Everything shot very well. In fact, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the shooting test here in Chronos right now. So this being called the CQB gun, it's a good thing it doesn't shoot too hot. In fact, it shoots perfect. If you guys are gonna be playing indoor or out, the numbers are right there where you want it. And the rate of fire is definitely there. And that's thanks to that 25K high torque motor that's in the grip here on the gun, pushing those gears, those torque gears and everything inside of the mech box. Also, fear not, didn't mention this in internals either. If that number is a little low or a little high for you, for your field, it does have a quick change spring system so you can make those adjustments. Again, you gotta take it out of the shell. You gotta actually get the mech box out of the receiver, but you don't have to open the mech box up to make those FPS changes. For those of you that are a little averse to making those changes, it is super easy and you'll have no problem. And a lot of times it will save you having to take this thing to a tech and pay a few extra bucks to make it happen. So if you've been holding out for a PDW, and I personally have because, just because of the two issues I discussed earlier, the battery storage and the comfort of the stock, definitely take a look at G&G's new PDW15 CQB version. And if you guys wanna pick one of these up, I'll as always have a link in the description below so you guys can check it out. But keep in mind, this is also a premium gun, so you are gonna be on the higher end. So, you know, if you guys are looking for a budget gun, this may not be in your ballpark, but, you do get what you pay for. And in the US, you're looking at around 320-ish dollars US, give or take a few bucks. But like I said, just those few minor changes do make up for that really nice price tag. 